looks something like this. see the head right here, something of a body right there. I see this thing, go, oh, nope, didn't want that. This thing going back into space there. I do see something happening underneath in the head right there and the legs coming out right here and some more legs coming out right here. And I see some other legs coming out the other side. Now, do I want to draw that the, the sort of branch this thing is, is sitting on? I think in this instance, I will. But even then, I start off with the overall silhouette of that branch, because I know I'm not going to draw the whole thing. So I'm going to draw some contour lines on there. All right, so there's my first sketch on this page. Very simple and graphical in my breakup of the forms here. Right, a few places I have some contour lines. Um, in other places I don't. I can actually keep going with this because I, I see this kind of lump in the middle of this and then add, turn that into like a little center line on that front surface right there. So let's just go on to our next one. kept to the notes uh, roughly, trying to keep fairly even spacing between sketches and layouts uh, or between different sections of sketches. So now I want to move on. What is my next thing going to be? Oh, a nice little side view. I can keep to this next box I was going to do, but um, I think I might want to make it larger. So in making it larger, what I think might happen is we select this green is I think I'll do something like this, which means if I do that, then maybe it'll, it'll be facing, the form bug will be facing this direction. Maybe I can find some sketch that's roughly this size. So like a front view or a top view of it. And then maybe I can even do like a larger sketch in this space right here. So maybe I'm just going to do three more sketches on this page. But again, even as I do these boxes, we can see that there's some overlap between these two, but depending on the contents of the sketch, they may not overlap at all. And again, also fairly even spacing between different things. And then this is the largest space right here but uh, maybe something might actually bridge that space right there and then some space for like a title or my name down here. But let's uh, close that up, go back to the pen and see what happens as I keep going with it. So we got the side view and I said I want to do that one bigger. So maybe something from black again, from here to here is what I said. You can, yeah, we, you can barely see those dots, but I did them. And so most of the part right here, back to thinking about like the head from the side, it's just mostly those eyeballs in there. You got this front section of the thorn bug before it comes back here, down like this, and it comes down like that. And then we go into the wings in there. And here we can very clearly from this side view see the three legs from that side. All 
And that's pretty good. Section is going on like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. So let's see what the next one has. Oh, perfect, right? That's going to fit great in this area right, that I want to fill in to the right of the sketch I just did, right? Something tall. Uh, so that's going to be wonderful. It's a view that I haven't quite seen before so far. So that's really going to work out well. And again, it's going to maybe peter at the top right there, go at the bottom right here. So with that, those dots, right, there's my, where my eyeballs are going to be, or actually maybe the bottom of the head, right there. Eyeballs in there and there. Rotate the page a little bit, I think come up to about here. These little spikes out to the side, rotate the page to sketch them. In fact, fill in kind of the gap in between those and the head right there. And lastly, finish up this thorn. Seems to come up like this, like that. Some contours around that for the form there. Goes back into space. We can even see it going back over there. See just a little bit of the head underneath it. And I can see the leg on the other side right there. And I see the other leg kind of coming out back here. And down. And again, wrapping around. And in this instance, you know what? Again, I think I will add this. branch it's sitting on into the sketch. I think we can see another leg kind of wrapping around that branch right there. So again I said now lastly I want to put like one more sketch on this page. Mm, not gonna work out in terms of trying to fill over out this big space down here at the bottom. Um, so I, well, I said I was just gonna keep going. Now I am searching for something that's gonna fit that space. Let's see if we can find a side view. That's a little bit reverse of what I wanted. Reverse, oh, this one right here. This one is a very much a side view, quite similar to that one above it. So let's see if we can find just any sort of three quarter view to this, no. Nope, nope, that's it, that's all I'm left with. So is there anything in here? Nothing that's too different than what I've done before. So let's see, that's nice in terms of like the detail we can get in there. But it's very similar to a sketch I already have. So I guess we will go, you know what I do like this. I do like this one. Um, I think there are features where you can horizontally like mirror it so you can flip the picture and like make it face the other way. Yes. Oh, I see what you're doing, what you're saying. Um, I don't know if I see that here in Google Drive, but actually let's just take this then, drag this over, and flip horizontal in here. And now we have that reference. Where do I want that reference? I That's fine where it is right there. And I, I want to keep this reference fairly small because I, I want to just be able to, I still want to be able to see, and we can get rid of that now. I want to be able to see the sketches around it so I can just better fit it in that space. Um, so yeah, thank you for that. Ariel, Ariel, right? You're the one who said that? Yeah. Yeah, thank you for that uh, thought. Uh, yeah, so that'll fit nicely in my space here. Am I still using the right pen? Yes, still using the right pen. So once more, where do I want to start? We, let's see this, right? 
if I do this, right, that line, it may not seem like much, but it's me, again, planning out my page so that, you know, is that line the same length of those eyes up there? And then how does that correspond to kind of coming up, you know, for that spike? And I think that does work. And then coming down for like the ground right here, I'm going to have a little bit of a space right here at the bottom. So now is there any way I can actually just like lower this a little? Well, yeah, there is a way we can do that because it's just a line right now. We can always come back and figure out some way to clean that up a little bit later on. So I'll just lower that just a little bit. Again, we can see something of the head down here. Got the eyeballs in there. Right, some things I don't quite clearly see in my reference image, but from some of my previous sketches, I see them in there. And I will use this center line that I've already started. And I see a spike kind of coming out in this direction. And there's another one kind of coming at us right here in the contour line around that. That's this part seems to transition down into this area over here. Seems to go back and not as big as I need to be. I think this should actually go further. And then this should even go further there. So then this little spike comes here. And this is that shape. Like that. So I'm because I started in pen, I got a lot of sort of cleaning up to do afterwards. This one would have been nice maybe to have done a marker first give myself a little more flexibility. We have a we have a leg kind of like this one's kind of lying down compared to some of the previous sketches. So the legs are sitting down like that. It's kind of black mass underneath where I don't clearly see anything. I have the other leg sort of coming out over here. Again, this sort of mass or I don't quite see as much detail underneath. Maybe I can figure out some things later on what's going on in there. And I see this and that and something going on right there. And I do want to show that this thing is like right on the ground. So I will kind of draw the shadow below it. Yeah, I think that works. Again, it got this one got a little messy, but maybe we can clean it up with our details and hatching, which will be the next thing to do with this. Again, if we were to then just put our name and date in the corner here, six is the sixth day. Yes, it is the six. Right, and get rid of this for now. Right, we can see. I most of those I'll keep with that grid, right? In this instance, right? I let's get rid of the, actually let's get rid of the sketch for a moment as well. Um, pen, right? Again, this grid. I started out wanting to be again. Cancel. I want to sketch on my notes, right? I start out wanting to do this column with three sketches in it, right? I wanted fairly even spacing in between where I would have sketches, also fairly space, even space between the edges of my page here. Then, right, I want to do another sketch and I thought it would be nice to lengthen that sketch up a little bit. And because of that, I knew that I couldn't fit the same sketch right here of doing that longer landscape orientation. I cannot fit the same thing next to it. So I kind of rotated that here and that determined that I would need something that had that more vertical portrait orientation to it. And lastly, I was left with this big space. Now this big space, I decided right to, that I want to put, try to put a bigger sketch in there. I could have said, oh no, I want to also do another smaller sketch in here and maybe two smaller sketches next to it. 
that would have been fine as well. Um, but this is what I decided to do was again, just focusing on that bigger sketch because I do like to, as I keep going, do bigger sketches. If I had done this way, maybe inside of these smaller sketches, I might have like done close-ups of something like the eyeball of the uh, tree hopper bug here. And another thing I might have done a close-up of was an interesting section of it. Not the spike, that's too too obvious. Maybe something of like the leg, right? Because I didn't really draw it that large at all. So if I could find a reference that looked closer at the segment of the leg and might have realized that there might be like little spikes or something on that, that would have been a nice call out detail to do in there. And then I would need one more sketch in here. Uh, and that might have been nice for something also similarly tall. And I think we saw one of those uh, in that, I, uh, that I didn't choose to do, but it would have been like just a slightly different orientation on the tree hopper bug in there. It might have been a nice opportunity to even call out, right, those details that this leg, right, is a detail of this right here, and this eyeball is a detail, right, of that eyeball right there. So there is like a slightly alternative layout to the one that it ended up doing. But let's go back to the one that I did do and how I'm going to sort of clean it up. We got the pen here. And we got the pen here. And what do I want to do? This, let's give us ourselves a title. All right, this is the thorn bug, also like a tree hopper, but let's go with thorn bug. Hmm. Sorry. I try not to undo with digital as much as possible unless there's some sort of technical error happening. And then this, it's doing this weird thing where it's making, all right, that's better. When I was doing my vertical line, was making it fatter in the middle when it shouldn't. Thorn bug. What are my favorite sketches on here? I really like, I really like this top one. I really like this top one right here. Uh, I really like this one a lot. What else do I like? Um, I like this little one down in the corner. And I want to clean up this line work right here. So let's go with this one first in terms of adding some detail to it uh, to help clean that up and cover up some of those mistakes I made when I was sketching it. So looking at the reference, and let's pull that reference closer to the pen work. First thing I think I'm going to do.
right there. And I think, oh, also a little bit right there. And now come back, right? Trying to get those, some little dots in there, kind of the opposite of doing the shadow for the texture, some highlights for the texture there. Not too much. Trying to keep my highlights in this front area right here. Maybe just a little bit right there with a few bright spots. And a little bit right there. All right. And I think, right, I feel pretty good about kind of trying to how I covered up those mistakes that I made when I was doing that layout. Um, so to go real quick in terms of not finishing this thing up 100%, but finishing up what I said I liked the sketch up here from the side view a lot, right? So just a thicker line weight around that. Go a long way for some contrast on it. Clean up some a few of those edges on there. And I also said I like this one down here in the corner as well. So we'll put a thicker line weight on that one also. All right, does anyone remember the little cheat that I did on this sketch? Anybody remember? No, no, you don't remember? That's great then that you don't remember because I don't need you to remember. I don't want you to remember. Now it just looks like everything that I sketched here was actually what was in the what was in the kind of original thing that I was looking at. So I will absolutely accept that you do, don't remember the cheat that I was doing. Okay, so just a little bit more marker on here. Um, I feel like I have kind of a big empty space at the top. So if I take my fat tip marker and maybe just do like a 30% actually, let's select like a 50% gray and just do 100%. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Hmm. All right, well, let's just do black and 30%. And there's that. And again, digitally, I erase, but physically, I would just keep, keep those edges cleaner. That just gives me a background right there. And I think that helps to fill in the space between these two is feeling a little blank. All right, um, I should probably add something to at least one more sketch here. And that one more sketch is starting to feel like it is this one in the corner here. So let's go back and just add a little pencil to that. Um, let's open up the reference. That must have been this one. All right. So looking at that, the light's coming from this angle over here. So let's copy that.
and some highlights on the eyeball is also a little highlight right here. And that's mostly it. I guess we could do even like a highlight on the branch, but try and stop it right there saying there's like a shadow right there where we can't really see a highlight anymore. That just gives it a little, a little more punch so it, it stands out on the page compared to everything else. I think coming back with a thicker line weight might be nice or some marker. Actually, as I keep adding to that, it does seem a little empty. So let's come back with, uh, again, just like a little, nope, that's white. Little marker in there. Little marker in there. There. Yeah, that's enough. And now we have a nice sort of one, two, three read on the page. Again, the, the biggest thing that happened here happened at the very beginning, which is again, thinking about, right, what is the layout that I wanted on this page? Um, so I think it's worth actually taking all of this stuff, putting it into a folder together getting rid of it for a moment. And other ways we could have thought about that layout, right? Again, as I was saying before, I could have, instead of doing a column, I could have done a row. And if I did a row, you know, I might end up with something roughly like this, but if I sort of shortcut that, it would be thinking about it this way and then fairly and even spacing between sketches. There's kind of a lot of space over here. So as I'm doing my sketches, maybe it would have been maybe better to squeeze these things a little closer together. And then I have enough space. And if this is space right here, which makes this space right here, and this space right here, then I could have squeezed, say, a, a, a last little sketch on my page there. In terms of and then make fairly even spacing between all my edges there, then come down to my next row and do something else for my layout. So instead, again, I like to keep getting, my, make my sketches larger as I keep going. So maybe it might be like this and like this. So in this instance, it would work out quite well, but I'd have two for the large sketches right there. And after that, after that point, I could go into one much larger sketch on the page. But the big thing here again is again thinking about the space between sketches. It doesn't mean you had to fill out right every single space of this gap right here because like say you do the thorn bug, it's okay, right? That it doesn't take up the whole thing as you sketch it. Right there, we do have the space up here. You don't have to fill every space, but these grids can help you to keep kind of a certain level of balance on the page. Um, Another approach that we can take, again, is still, again, I, most of the time, I like at least starting with a column or a row. It just keeps me organized as I get more comfortable with whatever it is I'm sketching. But then, sure, we can start to even do like overlaps of sketches. But if we're going to do an overlap of a sketch, right, then I want to think about it like really overlapping, right? So how there's a lot of space right here where this overlaps, not just some small little like corner of a sketch. That way, when I'm actually sketching something in this instance, like the thorn bug, Oh, 
technology. All right, so in this case, if I'm sketching the thorn bug, yes, on that layer there, right, I might have this one here. Coming out like this and even right or wrapping around that tree and I'll still sort of sketch that tree branch in there. And then I'll have another one in that next space. Where was those two facing each other? I think I just stopped too early. Say this one, right? actually, I think this actually makes sense for it to be this one right here. So maybe this one is kind of coming out like this and like that. Right, so not overlapping in the way I originally intended them to, but right, I'm trying to make that overlap pretty beefy and meaty and significant rather than just some small little corner touching. What works with this overlap is that they're just kind of overlapping in a somewhat insignificant area. So it makes sense that I could add more detail to the front of the sketch that I was just doing, but I could also add more detail to it. So it seems like this one should be on top of the one underneath because there's not much going on in this wing area back here, right? There's not too much detail. So I think the one on the literally on the top on the page should also be on the top of the other sketch as they overlap. Let's try and find another one for some opportunity for some overlap. Say like this right here. Right, maybe we have this kind of thorn coming out right there. And then so that means this little bug has this thorn coming out right there and overlaps with that one right there. Can and the wings kind of come out like this. And then we can see some of the legs coming back like this and some legs sticking out this way. Again, in this instance, I'm really trying to go big with that overlap. And this instance, again, I think this one on the top here. Nope, didn't want that. I think this one on the top here should be in front because the detail on the eyeball and the head is a lot more interesting than the back of the wings right there. So we can start to do overlaps as well, but I think the safer bet for a lot of people at first is just practicing and thinking about these grids and what, what is happening underneath. If I have the benefit right now of doing digital and I can just sketch the grid and then kind of erase it. What you're doing right now, what you're doing, um, what you can do is try doing these grids just with like a number one marker so that it, it's barely there. And then as you add pen on top of it, it kind of fades to the background. All right, so let's take this away and just show the one that I did before. And, oh, and not all of it. Let's get rid of that. Any questions at this point in time about any of this? Um, so what is your standards, um, uh, what is interesting or not interesting when, in terms of drawing the line, the, the thicker lines on the drawing? What was the first part you said? Oh, so um, you said that when you draw the, um, the lines that are going to make it thicker after you finish the drawings, um, what is what are your standards that are, um, that the line should be more thicker or not? Because I think you mentioned how uh, like the standards are whether it's interesting or not. Mm -hmm. That so I mean, you I'm are, not really sure how to like interpret that. You are absolutely right about what my standard is, which is to say on this page, hopefully when you look at this page, mm -hmm. the hopefully the first thing you see is 
this one right here. And why do you see that? Because it has contrast. What is the contrast that it has? That sketch has line weight, it has hatching, which in this instance is a little bit of texture. It also has contrast. The contrast is both from the line and hatching and it has also highlights. Another thing it has going for it compared to all the other sketches on the page is scale. It's one of the larger sketches on the page. Um, there are another other, a few other large sketches on the page as well, but it does have scale going for it, again, particularly because it is larger. After that, after you see, after your eye is hopefully first drawn to this one, I anticipate your eye probably going to this next sketch right here. You could go to some other places first, but why would you go to that, your eye go to the next sketch? Well, one is because if you go to this first sketch, it's kind of pointing up to that next sketch. So there's almost an arrow on the page pointing to that top sketch right there. So I hope that's the second thing you see on the page. The other reason why, again, this one also has line weight, which gives it some contrast, and it also has scale in terms of being, again, of the larger sketches on the page. After that, you probably might go over here, over to this one next, again, because this one is kind of pointing in that direction. It's also kind of pointing off in this direction too. Um, but again, what does, if we call this one number three of the third sketch you might see on the page, what does it have? Again, it has highlights. And it has, we'll call this medium contrast. Only in comparison to the other ones where it can have some marker on it, but it's not that dark. Um, now, I said you might go there, but equally, you might go in the opposite direction. And the reason you do that is because these two are connected with a background, which is also actually, this one has a background to it as well, as does this one has a background, right? That first sketch on the page, which we'll label number four right now, right, really just has a background going for it. Because um, there's no thicker line weight, there's no highlights on it or anything like that. Um, which leaves then the final sketches you look at on the page is this group right here. And probably between that group, you probably look at this one first. So that we'll call that five. And this one, six, this group, this little smaller group of six. Because I, of all the sketches on the page, I didn't touch those at all. And again, so that doesn't necessarily answer the question you asked, which is, you know, how do I decide? Um, I decided to make number one right here the goal like of drawing your eye to it is because I want to clean up some of those lines that I made mistakes on before, right? Where I had drawn some lines and they weren't quite where I wanted them to be. In cleaning up those lines, I wanted hatching to cover them up. In having hatching, I knew I'd be drawing more contrast onto that page, or sorry, onto that sketch. Um, I did like the sketch as well, um, but uh, I was sort of, in, I was also a little bit forced to make it stand out on the page. If I really didn't think it was a good sketch, then I would just not add anything else to it and try to draw attention to other sketches on the page by putting more details on those ones. Uh, that's, so again, I'm not, I don't think I'm doing a great job of telling you, you know, what is interesting. Um, it, it will vary from page to page, right? You might start off and think, Oh, sketch number four right here, that's really interesting. But then as you keep going, you get to sketch number three, and three is kind of similar to four, just in different, right, almost like reversed views. But I think three is more interesting, one, because it's a little larger, um, and then, right, as the reference had that, that shadow on there, that also is, was pretty nice on the, the branch it was sitting on. So I just think three is a slightly more interesting sketch than number four. That's my personal opinion. If you thought four is more interesting, then you should add more detail to number four. And the reason why I think seeing things that are interesting is because you want to draw people's attention to the interesting things on the page, to the things that you think are interesting on the page that you think people should see and pay attention to. So by putting that contrast on the page, you can start to do that. 
Um, the opposite of that is what is not interesting, right? I think these little sketches right here, while fun and sort of fill up the space, they were not as successful as I wanted them to be. They're not that interesting because the back of this bug is not that interesting. Um, it's hard to see the form very clearly. What is, what is iconic about this bug, right? Is that this side profile, right? That it has this sort of thorn shape to it. That's what's iconic about this bug. And the side view definitely has that. This front view does not, have, does not have it as clearly as a side view, but still has that thorn sticking out in a very prominent way. And that's interesting. But these ones back here, when it's just the back, it's just not as clear. That form, that shape, that sort of central piece that would draw someone into looking at this bug is just not as clear with these little sketches. And also they're little sketches, so they're hard to see. So they could have been interesting in terms of drawing them as a group together, but individually like, it did, didn't really work out. So that's why I, didn't, I, added, I did not add more to them. Um, and again, number four, number five, and number three are quite similar to each other. So how do I choose between one or the other? Well, I didn't want to add more detail to number five because I didn't want to draw you into that corner in a, in a tight, tight space because number one is, is kind of looking at number five, right? The head is right there kind of looking at it. but um, again, number five is a fairly small sketch. Number, it, number one and number five are quite close together. The distance that one has from three is, all, is what's nice about number three also, just on, as on the layout on the page. So by drawing a little more attention to that, it helps pull you over to that part of the page when you otherwise might not have. So those are all the thoughts that were going through my head, right, as I was sort of laying out which sketches I want to add more detail to. Any other follow-up questions? All right, I'll take that as a no. So what should you be doing? You should be doing what I was doing at first, which is just focusing on the layout, right? So simple sketches at first, kind of like number four right here, kind of like number six right here, just simple sketches, um, right? It's okay if they're kind of incomplete. And then after you have your layout, then go back and add detail to the sketches you like the most. Adding detail should be something that you are fairly familiar with at this point. Um, I know people are different skill sets and levels, but um, you can all add detail again. What is those details? I've already highlighted them a few of them here. Um, you cannot change scale because once you have a sketch on the page, you can't change that. But highlights, line weight, hatching, contrast through marker or hatching, and a background, right? Those are all ways you can add attention and detail to a specific, uh, literally also details, um, which could be, in, in this instance, right, details are some of these like little textures here that I'm starting to add to it. But right, I only add it to a few sketches. I don't add it to every single sketch on the page. Um, again, the, the simplest one to do is line weight because um, you just pick up a thicker pen and you can start to outline a sketch, a sketch you like. I think the next fairly simple one to do without having to worry too much about the content of your page is adding marker, whether that's in a background or on your sketch itself, kind of following the lighting that's in the reference you're looking at. Those, so again, those two marker and, and line weight are two fairly simple ways to add some contrast on the page there. Uh, again, I'd rather you, again, you fill out the entire page first. I believe this is the one that I was going to sketch over. That was so the one that I had much. a problem with the abdomen with last time. And I think you still had a little trouble with it this week. So that's why I'm going to sketch over it. So let's go to the other ones first, because I'll sketch over this and that'll hopefully help with that one. Um, I like what I like about this page is the contrast. Um, now you've called out the legs right here when you just put that in marker. 
But then I don't see anywhere else. I mean, I guess we have this right here where you just call it the legs on this one as well, but it's still very tiny. I would have expected to see a larger sketch of, the, of that because you've done this the way you've done it. Okay. I just it, put, I just colored in the legs because I just thought like adding more color would balance it a little. And my, my markers are actually starting to like run out. So I only really had enough marker for the legs. But, okay. Oh, is that well, that that's a that's a fair challenge that you only had enough marker for legs. But I would have in terms of balancing it, I would have just done the whole thing. Okay. Um, once you once you start doing that uh, in the silhouette, otherwise, again, doing again a sketch somewhere else of the leg so I can see that call out of like the detail in there. Okay. Um, I like your little indications of where the light is coming from. Um. Yeah, and I like your little call like right here, like looking at little sections of that closer. Um, I think this is, this is all great practice. A little, this is wrapping a little too fast around this. Yeah, I thought that too when I right. finished it. Well, it's like kind of curving up, but these other ones are better. So, you know, one little mistake is not the worst thing in the world on a page like this. Um, I, I really like this. I love this front view in terms of breaking it down to the form there. Um, it's a little rough with these contours right here, maybe like almost too much. Mm -hmm. uh, this is maybe where actually having less could have been to your benefit of kind of leaving a little bit uh, up in the air. Uh, but if you're, if you're going to try and define it more, I think you need to like break this off because I see this curve, but I see the straight line. So they don't like, things don't match up. Yeah, the, um, I really messed up on those contour lines, so. Yeah, um, but the rest of them look pretty good. Again, this is, I like the little leg right here. I like the hatching on this one, but then the contour lines on this one, I like the separation there. That can be beneficial towards understanding things. Um, and I also, I like head is not rectangular, but almost trapezoidal. I like your little notes about this dissecting the form visually in that way. That's a great thing to do. And oh, this is last week's. So let's switch over to looking at the sketch over. And again, what, what I think you're having trouble with is that abdomen, especially both in here and in here still. I think maybe you're trying to almost do too much um, in terms of looking at that abdomen. Um, whereas I actually think this one here looks, that's, that is not bright enough. I think this one here looks great. And I think this one here, even that little silhouette looks great. But okay. when you, I think, trying to turn it into this brick shape is like giving you a, you're making it too complex. All right, let me try what I, what would I do? Well, I would just treat the body even from this back angle, right? As it's just kind of square the first time I sketched it and that's it, right? No trap trapezoidal or any other polygonal shape in there. Like that's it, that's enough. Right, there's this little thing where it kind of curves down. And again, I have another cube sort of shape and it looks maybe like that. And maybe I'll cheat it a little bit and maybe get a little narrow towards the back end, but that's it. That's enough for simplifying it. That's what I've been trying to do, but it's just like the perspective of it when I'm trying to do the three quarters view is what messes me up. Mm -hmm. so. Well, you say that, but then I see like this little thing. Oh, whoa. Um, undo that. Right. I see this. Then I see like this little thing right here, right? This little triangle shape in there. And I think you're, and then I see also see like, I see your hatching lines going this way. And I think that's correct. But I see this other line kind of going this way. And that seems incorrect, mm -hmm. right? It looks like you tried to draw the shape like this for when yeah. if it's just been all the lines pretty much should be going to one vanishing point somewhere, no matter where they are. So then we could have say this and this and that and, and that, even though we can't even see that. And then we can see this and that. And that's now the correct perspective on there, right? Because all these, even though we have like this, this random shape, or not, this, not random shape, but we have this shape, right? That's this sort of multifaceted polygon. If you are to extrude it, which is what you kind of are trying to do here, right? So an extrusion, 
would be done this way. That all, again, even though the shape is all these points, those lines would still be going towards one vanishing point. Okay. Uh, and again, you were almost there, I see with your hatching, because when I would hatch this, I would also hatch it like roughly going to that same vanishing point, because that reinforces that shape there. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, but mostly, so I think maybe that's one thing that's doing it. I mean, I'm not too worried because it's, I mean, in this instance, like the technique of making it simpler is actually making it more difficult for you. Um, so yeah, I, would, I wouldn't worry too much because everything else looks pretty good, honestly, okay. again, especially because these ones look good right here. Um, Oh, forgot that line right there. Yeah, don't don't make the simple things more difficult than they need to be. Okay. Any specific questions? Um, no, it was mainly just like that perspective question because I really struggled with that one, and I struggled with that last week too. So. Okay. Thank you. Again, it's how quickly. Right, these lines change. So if you we, if we were to see this, right, one section, right, it's fairly circular. Right. If you have your your core, the hatching you should the core right there is perpendicular, right, to that edge right there. This next set should be perpendicular to right there, and again each time perpendicular to wherever that sort of line is. What you've kind of done in here, if we look at that section, is you have your first, set, you have your core and it's perpendicular to that form, but then it, you like go like too much of an angle in there and like too much, nope, I, oh, okay, well, we'll just keep that. Too much of an angle in there and like too much of an angle in there. All right, so again, with this circle, right, becomes almost, let's actually just give myself a thicker pen, right, should become this very flat thing here as a result of these hatch, hatching lines. So again, I think, again, you're just going around just a little too fast when I look at that hatching there. Again, same thing right here. When I see this and then this, again, particularly, right, those three hatching lines that I just sketched compared to what I see at this curve right here, right? When I see that curve, I see hatching that might look kind of like this and then like this, right? A little more slowly, right? The angles that it goes at are just a little slower than what you put in there. And so how quickly they, they angle around. That that's the that's the main challenge. Uh, and again, for as much as I give you trouble about proportion, the dragonfly proportion here is pretty good. Um, you're also already on the path towards contrast on the page because we have like a background here. Actually, what let's do this, right? We have a background. We have highlight. We have hatching for contrast. We have marker here and some highlight. So what is the thing that you could definitely try adding to all of this is for some contrast as you do these pages is line weight, right? Pick, a, pick up a thicker pen and put a thicker line weight around some of these. So you just add another level of co contrast on your pages. Um, but I wanna sit, take a moment to step back and just look at this hatching. Is there any 
after the demo I just sort of talked about, again, with your lines going around a little too quick, is there, so why is there not much to say about this page? Because I look say at one little sketch here, I mean, the hatching in this little area seems fine, as far as like kind of following the form here. But then I have this gap right here. I'm like, I what is going on in that little section there? Um, the other thing is looking at this, this is a fairly small sketch on the page. And then as we get closer to it, uh, like we have, you try to do the hatching in that one little thing for the leg right there. I think that's pretty difficult to do the hatching in that one little area of the leg, especially when it's so tiny. When it, when it is that tiny, I do try and just leave a little space for some reflected light on either side. Right, that space for reflected light because when we have round things right, and light is coming at it, say in a certain direction, and then we have a core shadow as a result of that. The core shadow is the darkest spot, but then as it goes away from there, it will gradate and get lighter and lighter. But we still also, again, that gradation still continues on the back side as well. So again, leave that little gap for reflected light even in here, right? It's the same thing that I'm trying to do right there. Um, but again, even, yeah, even in that tiny little space. So I think the thing that could have helped you out was sketching larger. Again, because each of these sketches is just so small on the page. Even like thinking about today's uh, lecture demo, of like how much space you have like between sketches, right? you kind of have a lot of space between sketches. Um, so like definitely like this sketch right here, right? Could have been a lot bigger because there's all this space we have here on that page. So it could have easily like come up to like this size and that would have been fine in terms of scaling the size of this sketch up. Um, but mostly, I just need more sketching, right? There's, there's not a lot to go from here. Within that critique, did you have any questions? Um, so, you know, on the first one, the first oh, one I, was, I did uh, that, that like ring thing where it's like empty space. Mm -hmm. It was like white there. So I like left it blank. Do I just go over it? So, that's a great question. So if I have something, say like this, All right? So I have this cylinder, right? I want to hatch it, and there is, it is, right? Maybe like fifty percent gray here. It is white in the middle, and then again fifty percent gray at the bottom again. Well. If that's the case for my hatching, I'll do this. And also this up here. And gradate from there. And the same thing at the top. But now I'm not gonna leave the white completely blank because even if something is white, we're still gonna have some sort of core shadow there. So I might do that core shadow, but I might make it oops, a little lighter, right? So spread that out just a little bit more so it's lighter. And so that way that, that gradation happens, but it's just a little lighter than what's around it. Yeah is maybe also just make this one darker just for more contrast because even though I said 50% gray what I'm really going for is just contrast so this way it'll just a little more clear contrast between again like a dark dark area and a lighter area there so I can give a little even up a little more gradient going this way and same thing in the other direction um, 
but yeah, we we still want we definitely want something in that white area. Otherwise, again, it looks kind of odd of like what's happening in there. And the other thing we can do to that is also add a little white pencil for sure, not for color, right? I'm not saying just because it's white, don't add white to it, but that we can, oops, right? Put a little white in there again. We might still have some here too, but just maybe not as much as in this one. And just for that contrast between the two of them. All right. This one has quite similar uh, elements to the last one that we were just looking at, but we have some weird overlaps with this. Uh, again, even like this right here is unfortunate. Um, yeah, there are just some weird overlaps. It looks like this one is attacking this one, and as a result, this one has decided to attack this one. Um, maybe, I guess these bugs might be attacking each other, but I don't think that's actually what's happening. Um, let's go to a pause real quick. I really like this one at the top because you, it's definitely a different view that we don't often see of this. And particularly, right, your detail in this right here of looking at like, you know, how those legs come into the body, right? That's fantastic because we don't normally see that. Um, with the other uh, page, I was telling you that, right, I think you could have been a bit broader with your forms initially. Uh, and that I think goes towards, again, why we do these kind of box shapes, which I think you did a, an okay job of. Um, but then, and then I think you continue that even here, right, as you sort of try to round this thing out, you know, keeping that sort of, again, very broad shape of it rather than getting to specifics of, okay, there's this like mandible and the outline kind of looks like that. And there's this other part right here and right here. But I think this is what you kind of did on one of your other, on the other page and one of them, you try to like, draw it too specific. Uh, and then when you didn't add anything more to it, it was hard to tell what was going on in that shape. So again, that this is again why I like to do fairly simple forms at first, because if I choose not to add anything else to it, it still reads fairly clearly on my page without adding anything more to it. But if you do something like, again, this one here, I, I really have to add more hatching or details. Otherwise, those elements on there don't make sense. It looks more like squiggly lines than like a definitive form. Um, again, this one just suffers a little bit from, sorry for that. Uh, zooming zoom out thing from you know these awkward layouts um i i know i've shown you thumbnails before and then also just generally today talking about you know planning out those boxes right of, okay if i have this one here right what do i want this one here and maybe i think now looking at looking at that way okay we can have this overlap but i don't think that was the best place i think this other sketch should have been sort of reversed, right? So the, the, the back end, the less interesting part, maybe was facing the other direction. And I think that actually might have worked out better for you on this page, right? Of where this primary sketch is now blocking some of that other one, but it's not in like a key element that we really want to look at. Um, yeah, but also, again, you have some good things going on here with the uh, contrast. Again, we see these two sketches. Uh, something else you could have done, I've mentioned this with some other people, is maybe, like, say, put like a background, you know, behind these ones to kind of tie them together. Actually, let's not do that like that way. Let's actually just put that background in there by grabbing a marker and, right, putting it in there. If you're like some other people, maybe you might be running out of marker, then okay, you don't have to do this. But I think that would help your page out a little bit as another way to get some contrast on, on the page there. Did you have any questions, Eunice? All right, so yeah, I like this background because it's very similar to this honey right here. So that's, that's good. Um, so one thing 
is we've been talking and working on with you definitely about, you know, sort of vignetting where you put detail. And this one kind of seems to be in this circle right here. But that's the case. And I still want just a little bit on these legs. All right, so just a little bit more on there. And even, you know, something just a little bit more in here. Um, and again, even something just a little bit more right here. Because this leg has detail, but these other ones don't. So that, that balance there is just feels a little odd. The other thing you could do is, uh, again, I like the hatching you do have is nice, but again, I don't, I think I would add just a little bit more right here just to finish this, this, this main body out. And then, yeah, and then just don't do anything in that back one. And then just like maybe a little vignette on that leg right there, a little vignette on this one right there. So this, this first one is very close, but now thinking about the days, again, demo and lecture is don't put, hatch on every single one of these beads because now we don't have contrast between the sketches, right? Um, you know, I guess if you're gonna, if you're gonna remove it from one of them, it'd probably be this one right here. Because why? Because we don't have another top view. So this is nice. This top view is nice because we don't have that anymore anywhere else. But this side view we, right here, again, it's very similar to the side view up there already. So we don't get too much new from you putting detail on that one. Almost, I would say you could even get away by not putting anything else on this one either. It is different, like since it's like this like three quarter view of it kind of coming at us uh, compared to like a mostly side view, but you can get without without putting something on that one because again, you're just putting it on the, on the mostly on the uh, butt right there. And I think it's much better on, again, on this top view, putting the detail on that one. But again, I do like this one. And so I think that looks fine that what we can prove that with is coming back and you know, maybe even some, let's do an even thicker line weight on that one to help just give a little bit more contrast, right? Help some parts of that B pop out in front of other parts of that B. All right, so that head really pop, maybe even how you do your, your hatching on the body right there, make that fuzziness right there, and even put this leg in front of some other parts right there. Again, so some thicker line weights, we're gonna go a long way to helping that sort of pop out a bit right there. Again, so the hatching you do have is nice. It's more just about how you decide to sort of finish it and transition it and not do where you stop sort of slowly stop doing the hatching. And then also that you don't have to put hatching over everything that should help save you time. But on top of saving you time, it will give you contrast on the page.